Hello everyone, welcome to a corner of farming in the Philippines. So it's fairly early morning. Tata and I are getting some of this done before it gets too hot. It's definitely going to be too hot shortly. So I was able to bring the water hose down from the round tank all the way to here. And I'll be able to water basically uh, all these rows here, all these going along, all these in here, and, and I'm going to do that uh, this morning. And uh, at least get those done. Now Tatai, you know, I've been thinking about it as well, and Tatai finally, uh, Tatai had the same idea and is going to take action on it. Look, all that black poly that Bill Montgomery sent us like I don't know, five years ago, uh, we still have the vast majority of it. Some of it got destroyed in a fire, but uh, we still have most of it. And so what Tatai wants to do is make a a manifold back there on the other side of his house, close to where that uh, uh, well is, and uh, just bring those lines this way. And we'll use that black poly and the emitters, still have all the emitters, and uh, just run permanent watering in here. Um, we can't really use the drip tape because it has too many emitters. They're every foot. But with, uh, with that black poly, we can, uh, you know, you just pierce a little hole in the, in the half-inch line and set an emitter, and you can do it as... Uh, for as many as you want. So I still have ball valves. We still have something to make a manifold out of. So that's what we're going to do here. In the interest of making things a little more automatic, I'm going to cut down on the hand watering. So that's the ag well right over there. And then this line here with a T in it, that goes up to the tilapia pond. And we had this line in here that went, that was going straight back that way about 100 feet. And we were filling a trash can and then uh, carrying two and a half gallon buckets of water <clears throat> to water the trees. So Tata and I talked about it and he came up with a plan, which we're in the process of executing so this is the uh, one and a half inch it's really one inch it says one and a half in the advertising but it's really one inch uh, flexible black poly and those black lines that we had from before uh, are connected to it these are the same connectors that we use for the drip line. The, uh, they fit right into this flexible black poly and the half inch rigid poly uh, connects right to it. And so we've got these lines running down off of this. So uh, we can Theoretically, automatically water this. Now, Tata is going to be going along and putting in emitters. We have emitters still that we're going to use. They're high output emitters. What can you say, Tata? Very hot. hot. It is very hot. Uh, they're probably, I don't know, they're at least five, five gallon per hour. Two emitters? Okay. And the smaller ones, you're just going to put one? Yeah. Okay. So he's ran this all the way to uh, the piggery and through the piggery. This, this line. I've watered all this already. I did this. Uh, 
way. This morning, you know, you're gonna put a line that way. Yeah. I'm okay. Are you gonna condemn here, Tatai, or are you gonna put a line? Yeah. Also, we put a line in the side of the. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sounds good to me. If you have, if you can, Tatai, save 10, 15 meters of this to reconnect to the line in the pond so that we can, so the discharge is farther up, you know, like we'd planned before. Yeah, yeah. Save whatever you can. Okay. So we're trying to get this get the motor over there. drought relief uh, plan into action here. What were you saying about tomorrow, Tate? Oh, uh, I will give a test drive tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, I finish this there. You finished putting are we gonna are we gonna have enough black poly? Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot out there in the canal? Uh, I would get them in the canal. Oh, okay. And so I'm here at the edge of the piggery. Right. This is where Tatai is putting in the uh, irrigation line. I watered all this along the piggery this morning. You can actually still see it's kind of damp there. So I watered a good many of the trees, banana trees back in there, and this line. And this afternoon I've watered all the all the trees up by the house, the avocado trees, lemon trees, the pomelo trees, all the trees we have up there, and some bananas as well. And I'm doing this line of banana trees that's on this side of the piggery. This is the line, the flexible line that he's coming through here, and that's what I, I was talking about, the, the excess there. I want to connect to the uh, the line that's going into the pond, so the discharge will be closer to the road and further away from the dam. So I'm continuing to water here. Probably take me another hour because I'm giving them a good soaking. I just set it on the far side there and just let it run. All right, another day done. I'm running this last little bit down in the gutter here. I'm gonna let it run about 15 minutes. It'll fill that up and water those trees down at the end. I need about another 20 feet of hose, but I don't have it. But I did, I was able to get all these watered up to this point. And it's after four and I've got to go change the solar. So another day done. Tatai got a lot done on that irrigation. I was going to make two other videos today, but it's too dang busy. Maybe tomorrow. But the day is done today. A lot of water. One thing I am going to do is uh, take the larger crayfish out of this tank here. Now the reason I just don't connect that line to it and dump them all in there is that there, I am fairly certain there's some in here that are less than an inch. <coughs> and I don't want to put those in with the larger ones, so I'm just going to take the larger ones out, the ones that I think can survive and thrive and I'll put them in there. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah. See that that larger size there are the ones that I uh, will move. But any of the little guys that come through there I'm gonna, I'm gonna toss back in. There was only about 10 of the uh, pinky to index finger sized 
in this that I transferred. But there are hundreds of the uh, anywhere from this to this size in there. Hundreds of them. I didn't even count them. Didn't, didn't disturb them. I just got the biggest ones out. They were easy to catch and uh, I'm filling it back up with water now. And so, uh, as the pregnant uh, females uh, hatch their cralings, they're going to go in this tank here. And this is going to be a juvenile grow out. And in about two months, I'm going to go through that again, and the uh, pinky to index finger sized ones are going to go in the round tank. I haven't checked the pregnant females that are in this one yet. I've just been too too busy. I'm sure that none of them none of them had orange eggs when I put them in there, so they weren't close. The eggs turn a reddish orange when they're uh, getting ready to start hatching, and they were all still uh, the brownish green of fresh eggs. So. Uh, it's only been like 10 days anyway, so in about six weeks, well, a month, four total of six weeks, I'll check those. All right, it's been a full day and a half. I'm going to feed the dogs, feed the fish, and call it a day. Thank you, everyone. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe.